Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at the liabilities and stockholders equity section of the balance sheet. In the prior session we examined the asset side and in the first session we look at the usefulness, the importance of a balance sheet. In this session we're going to dive a little bit deeper into specific section for the liabilities, current liabilities, long-term liabilities, and we will discuss the stockholders equity. I know I mentioned this in the prior session, I will mention it again. Current liabilities will be covered much, much more in depth later on in its separate chapter, as well as long-term liabilities, its own chapter, as well as stockholder equity. What you need to know for now is an overall view, an overall view of these categories. So current liabilities, long-term liabilities, and one section stockholders equity. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So liabilities, what are they? Liabilities are debt. And any liability that's expected to be paid off within one year, or the company's operating cycle, whichever is longer, we assume one year is longer, by using current asset, or creating another liability is considered a current liability. So what does that mean? So if you have a debt and you have to pay off that, that debt within one year, and when you pay it off, you are using current assets. And how do you pay off your debt? You guessed it, cash. Cash is a current asset. Or sometimes what you do is you refinance your current debt, which is fine. You create another current liability to pay off a current liability. An example will be you have an accounts payable and you owe someone $7,000. 30 days later, you don't have the money to pay it. You will tell the vendor or the lender, could you please remove the accounts payable? Now let's make it a notes payable for 90 days. Give me 90 days, I'll pay you interest plus the 7,000. What you did is you replaced one current liability with another. So those are what current liabilities. Now, by default, long-term are something that's paid outside that period. So what could be some examples of current liabilities? Accounts payable, short-term debt. Notice it's short-term debt, notes payable because we have short-term debt and we have long-term debt. When you borrow money, the business can borrow money for six months, nine months, or they can borrow money for 10 years. Those are two types of debt. Some is current if it's due within one year and others is not non-current. Now, we are going to learn shortly that the debt is some, the long-term debt. It could have a current portion, not it could. It will have a current portion and a long-term portion. We'll see that in a moment. Unearned revenue is when customers pay you ahead of time for services that you haven't you haven't performed yet. Income tax is payable is what you owe to tax authorities, whether that's a federal, state, or local, or payroll taxes. Accrued liabilities is any expense that you did not pay yet, and it's pay it's due within one year, like payroll. Uh, it could be rent, it could be interest. You could have many accrued expenses. And let's focus now on current maturity of long-term debt. All right, and we have a category called other current liabilities, something other than the one above. Now let's talk about current maturity of long-term debt. In order to discuss current maturities of long-term debt, we need to discuss long-term debt or long-term liabilities or non-current liabilities. Remember, liabilities are current, which we discuss them right here, and it's non-current, which we would look at here, long-term. Non-current will have long-term debt net of short-term debt. Wow. Okay, what does that mean? So here's what I want you to know. This company has a long-term debt of 1,500,000. I don't see any of 
I don't see this number anywhere well I'll show you why of that 1 million 500,000 long-term debt of this amount 240,000 of it is due within one year let's not next year let's say within one year within one year from the balance sheet date within one year therefore 240,000 of that loan is listed with the current liabilities this is what the 240,000 coming from well if 240,000 is current debt of current of the long term the remaining is 1,260,000 and that is long term debt it's not due within one year net of short term portion what's the short term portion the 240,000 so notice the long term debt is separated into a current portion and a long term portion and I can tell you from experience when I was in practice because we dealt with small businesses many small businesses they have long-term debt and what we had to do we had to break down the debt the preparing a loan schedule between short term and long term and why do I remember this story because we had one client that had 15 different loans and this individual was a funeral home he would refinance his debt constantly and we were preparing quarterly financial statement for them so it was extremely challenging determining what's the short-term portion and what's the long-term portion of the debt so that's long-term debt what could be other than long-term debt under non-current unearned revenues hold on a second you just said unearned revenues is short term it all depends on the unearned revenues now most unearned revenues especially for small businesses is short term but you could have it's not common you could have long-term unearned revenue what does that mean it means someone pays you an amount of money and they gave you more than a year to perform it could happen not very common bonds payable are like that we'll, we'll have a whole chapter about them but it's long-term debt and other non-current liabilities under not under non-current liabilities usually you'll have three categories notes which are long-term in nature bonds and leases those are the three things and guess what for each one of those you're gonna have a separate chapter separate chapter for notes oh, well actually no notes and bonds will be covered together and leases will be covered separately so we'll cover those later but this, those are usually what you will see in the long-term debt long-term debt or non-current debt remember the loans the long-term loans are separated now the life of this loan the last year let's assume this loan is 10 years the last year nothing will be long term the whole thing will be short term because during the last year the last payment is due within one year therefore the debt will be paid off within one year what else do we need to know about about the debt is you have to break down this 1 million 260 and the notes of the financial statement you have to break it down what is it composed of it's composed of 10% senior notes due an installment of 50,000 we have half a million of that loan mortgage notes at 6% 300,000 we have a commercial paper at inter at a 4% interest rate 400,000 bank loan at 300,000 at interest rate altogether 1.5 million of this amount 240 short term was listed with short term and the long term net of short term is 1 million 260 remember I told you they have loans of 1.5 million and this is all the loans and what you do and what you do in the real world for this loan you will have a short term and a long term for this amount you'll have a short term and a long term then you'll add all the long term you put them here and you keep the long term and you'll have a schedule work paper that shows all of this I'm just giving you a taste of the real world and again if if the business you are dealing with is constantly refinancing you sometimes you'll be pulling your hair trying to figure out what amount should be short term and this individual specifically he it matters to him which portion is short term which portion is long term because he had all these loans kind of to kind of complete the story 
and when you have loans the bank might not the bank the bank will impose on you certain restriction and his current assets divided by his current liabilities should not fall below a certain amount I don't remember the amount so he wanted to reduce current liabilities as much as possible and wanted to reduce the current portion and post put the loan in the long-term portion because he did not want his current ratio remember we talked about the current ratio the first lecture of this lesson when we looked at the balance sheet we said the balance sheet helps you in the in measuring the liquidity the current ratio is one way to measure liquidity and the bank wants you to maintain a certain liquidity level and the more you have in current liabilities the the, the less is your liquidity that's why he would argue with us about we did not do it properly and he'd ask us to redo it again and again and he would complain to the partner uh, let's put it that way it was not fun but that's a story from the front line. <laughs>